Hello, my Jason, and welcome to my review of the live action TV series adaptation of Erased or Bokudake ga Ina Maichi. And so, there are two other adaptations of uh, this manga series by K. Sanabe's uh, mystery manga series. Um, I've only seen the anime adaptation, I've only read the first volume of the manga, but the anime adaptation was done by A1 Pictures that had a uh, winter run from January to March of 2016, and the live action film came out on March 2016, and it starred Tatsuya Fujiwara. And so both uh, the anime adaptation and live action film adaptation had their own endings uh, that they went in their own creative direction, since the manga series ended around the same time uh, the anime series uh, ended and the live action film uh, released and so this live action TV series is the first time ever that we got to see the manga series ending adapted to its fullest. However, I will say for the full disclosure that the ending of the uh, live action series, I really, I don't know what happens in the holidays play down in the manga, but at least for the live action uh, TV series, it plays up pretty similarly to the anime uh, ending that you do get. However, the pacing is much different, I will say, and the events are a bit different as well. And you know, the themes and characters uh, moments that you do get in both are pretty similar. And so you still get that catharsis of the end of a fulfilling ending either way. You know, I, had to, I didn't have a problem with the anime ending. However, I did feel it was a bit rushed on uh, getting to point A to point B uh, for the TV series, you do have much better pacing uh, from getting one point to the other and getting that catharsis of uh, Satoru, uh, catching the killer and getting the killer sort of, uh, you know, getting his punishment and you know, getting with justice uh, for all the kidnapped girls. But if you're not familiar with the anime uh, series or even anything about race at all, uh, the manga description at least is this. Satoru Fujinima is a struggling manga artist who has the ability to turn back time and prevent deaths. When his mother is killed, he turns back time to solve the mystery, but he ends up back in elementary school just before the disappearance of his classmate Kayo. And so that's the whole uh, basis of the story. Um, you know, the complaints, uh, some minor complaints, but the whole like revival uh, thing that he calls his time travel ability isn't really well explained. Um, I, I think I have a few theories of what it actually is, you know, the reason why Satoru goes back in time to save Kayo, just, I think it's but the idea of second chances and the idea of, I, even in the ending, the whole monologue at the end that uh, Satoru gives, um, he talks about how, you know, you given, you're given this opportunity to save people, and yet sort of the whole basis of Satoru saving Kayo and as, as all the classmates is that he, you know, wants to be a hero, a defender of justice, as he calls himself. And I think that's the whole point of the revival thing, this whole ability to turn back time, is this ability to um, sort of uh, fulfill your regrets, and you'll fill up this void within you. And yeah, that's the whole big thing with, uh, I won't reveal the killer at least, you know, if you ever read the manga series or watched the anime, but the whole, the killer um, talks about this void inside of him that he wants to fill up, and I think that's something that is very relatable to a lot of us, that we do have this void inside us, and, you know, we have these regrets for our past that if only we did this differently, and I think that's the whole point of this as well. I think subconsciously, uh, Satoru had this void inside of him that, you know, maybe he could have done something for Kayo. And he does think about this uh, during the run uh, from his elementary school days that, you know, he saw Kayo um, standing alone in the park before her death. And he thought he could have done something about it. I think, you know, subconsciously, he's always been thought, thinking about that. And so he's been given a second chance to save Kayo. And that's all the whole uh, through-line basis of the story. Uh, of course, you know, many other obstacles come along the way. So Toru learns about his bigger destiny as well. Not only just Kayo needs to be saved, but there's other uh, two other girls and many other uh, kidnappings as well from other children, um, you know, other bo little boys as well, who are kidnapped by the serial killer, and, you know, he realizes that he has this bigger destiny uh, around him. You know, the other Japanese title, the way it's translated, you know, um, the town without me, essentially, is sort of what it's translated as, you know, it's very more apt than uh, erased uh, for that title of uh, the whole theme and story behind uh, this series here. And so it's a very well um, done series, well well written as well, whether you wa read the anime, watch the... Uh, uh, read the manga, I'm sorry, or watch the anime, or even watch this live action adaptation, you know, you can really um, do any of those things because the live action series does a good job at, you know, 
um, adapting the series itself. You know, you don't have to read the manga. You don't have to watch the anime series to understand what's going on. It's very well paced. It's a very well good standalone thing. But if you had read the manga or watched the anime, it adds even more of a bigger experience from yourself because these live action adaptations only serve to add rather than just replace your favorite series. And that's the whole point of adaptations. And I think that's why a lot of people are complaining about these live action adaptations because they uh, take away the experience. They don't add more. They kind of hurt the experience of, you know, whether it be uh, Dragon Ball Evolution or The Last Airbender or even Ghost in the Shell recently or Death Notes. You know, they don't add the experience. They just take away from it. And I think this live action TV series of Erased adds more to your um, enjoyment of the series itself. See another uh, adaptation of it and see different choices that live action actors can take uh, from the characters. And so this live action series is directed by uh, Ten Shinoyama and the script is written by Tomomi Okubo. And the main stars uh, that I'll highlight here are Yuya uh, Furukawa as the older Satoru uh, Fujinima, uh, Ryo Uchikawa uh, plays the younger Satoru, Mio Yuki plays Airi Katagiri, Rinka uh, Kakihara uh, plays the uh, younger Kayo Hinatsuki. Uh, Shike Yuki Totsugi uh, plays Gaku Yashiro. Tomoka Kuratani plays Sachiko Fujinima, Satoru's mother. And Jin Shirasu plays uh, the older uh, Kenya Kobashi. And so those are the main uh, stars of the film. Those are the only performances that I think are only need to be highlighted. And they're all really well done, especially uh, the two actors play Satoru, the younger and the older ones. Uh, the younger one, though, uh, some of his expressions are a bit too much. I think he's a little tr trying too hard. I'm not sure whether the director was telling uh, the kid uh, to really play up these uh, excited or shocked expressions, but they're a bit much as well. There are some cringy and some cheesy moments that do happen here. Um, granted, in the anime and the manga, they, those are the same moments. However, seeing them played up in real life is a bit different uh, as well. I guess you could use the Alita Battle Angel example that the anime eyes that Alita has is much cooler in the manga, in the anime, than actually seeing it in real life. And so I think that's sort of the thing we're seeing here in this adaptation as well. That there's a lot of cheesy moments in the anime and the manga that don't really translate well in live action. So that's where it falls a little bit here for live action. TV series. However, um, the way this movie is shot, at least the TV series is shot, is really well done. They shot in the same exact location as the childhood um, place is set. You know, it's set in uh, Tomokami City in Hokkaido, and that's where uh, Satoru's childhood is set, and this whole location is fantastic uh, to look at, and even the, uh, the, the landscape shots and the wide shots that are shown are really well done here. Uh, the only disappointment I'll say for anime watchers is that the Christmas tree scene and um, the uh, Kayo eating breakfast scene, those scenes are are kind of there. Um, the Christmas tree scene is pretty much uh, the same exact in the anime. However, it's, you don't really have that Sakuga moments uh, that you do have in uh, anim animation rather than live action. You know, live action, you could do the same thing. However, I think that would require a lot of CGI. If you're doing it practically, that would take a lot of work as well. And even the breakfast scene, they do get the gist of it, and it is pretty effective. However, it's not as effective as it was in the anime series uh, where you do see Kayo uh, with the whole breakfast scene and the whole uh, meaning behind that as well, you know, living in a very comfortable home and really showing why Sachiko uh, as well, you know, she still stands out in the live action TV series uh, here as a really great mom, one of the best mom characters in anime, um, best mom characters in live action, not sure about that, but still uh, Sachiko, uh, the way her mannerisms and character is presented in anime is still well and true here in the live action TV series. And this review isn't to discredit uh, the anime series or the manga series, I think they're all pretty great in their own rights, you know, they do uh, their own things that they're able to do in their own mediums. You know, there are things you can do in manga, they can't do in anime or live action, and there's things you can do uh, and vice versa as well. And so the Erase Live Action TV series only adds to the experience, as I said before. Um, there are very subtle acting choices that are really well done uh, here that you don't really get to see in the anime. Uh, there are other things in the anime you don't get to see in live action. So there's lots of uh, pros and cons of each. I think this is a very great live action TV series. And, you know, Netflix with this co-production with another Japanese company to able to release it worldwide through 190 countries. Hopefully a lot of people get to see this, even people who have never read the manga series or watched the anime series. Hopefully they do, they do enjoy it because I think this is can, it can be at least an enjoyable uh, experience because this 12 episodes, they ring by really fast. I think each episode is around 20 to 30 minutes long. And so it really plays well as a great big movie within itself. You know, each episode is really well paced. The endings are... 
um, they do leave a cliffhanger, but they still leave you wanting more while also stopping at the same time to give yourself some breaks as well. And so with a well-paced series with very subtle acting as well, great acting choices uh, from uh, not only the younger kids, but younger Soturu, younger Kayo, especially younger Kayo, who really resembles the anime Kayo in some ways, especially the way um, she insults Soturu sometimes with those slight insults as well. Uh, Sachiko, uh, her actress as well, really great uh, acting choices as well. Even the climax endings are different, but I really like the pacing of them, and I really like um, the catharsis you do get, you do have this bigger um, understanding of all the themes and the uh, character moments as well between older Satoru and older Kenya. For all that being said, gonna give this live action t TV anim adaptation of Erased an A minus. For all that and a lot more with a very well paced series. Uh, great uh, shots from the cinematographer as well, really well directed and really well written as well, you know, minus all the cheesy and cringy uh, things that go on, all the cringy moments that happen, uh, just all you can do for the, within this medium. And so what are your thoughts on not only the live action TV series of Erased, but also the manga series, the anime series, or even the live action film if you've seen that as well? For your thoughts on all those adaptations on the comment section down below, whether or you want to talk about which one's your favorites or which one you prefer over the others. I like to hear all that in the comment section down below. Also make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thank you for watching my review of the live action TV series Erased or Boku Dake Ga Ina Maichi. Who's a nice day? Bye bye.